Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to go over using ID and class selectors in order to manipulate elements on your web page. So I've actually got a blank page set up here, so give me a quick second, and I think I'm going to go ahead and type up, let's see, And that's pretty good. Okay, a little brief page there. Let me go ahead and take a minute to save this. I'll just save over to my desktop. All right, so now I've got a page. And I left out a couple metas, but I've got uh, some of the most critical for an HTML5 document, doc type definition, HTML tag with language attribute, got the meta character encoding, and a title for my page. And I think I'll use some internal styles here, or embedded styles, which means I'll put styles right in here in the head section. So I'll create a little section in here using a set of style tags. And this is where I'm going to put my CSS rules that manipulate elements on my web page. And my focus here is on ID and class selectors, which are used a lot. So if I just were to jump out to the web, and let's check out good old apple.com. And I'll right click in a blank area. I'm going to view their page source. So this is Apple's HTML code. And if we wanted to, we could go check out their CSS file just by clicking on this link here. And there's the CSS file. And in their CSS file, I can see, here we go, global header, global nav. These are ID selectors, OK? And the little pound sign there lets me know. Let me zoom in, make sure you can see that nice and clear. So yes, this is an example of an ID selector. So they must have an element on their page with ID equals global header. They must have another element with ID equals global nav. And they've got a lot of these. Let's see what else we've got. Um, here we go. Here's g-search. So they have an element on their page with ID equals g-search. And the dots right beneath that, this is an example of a class selector. So dot global header dash js, and it has a little dot in front of it, and that's a class selector. So whenever you see a dot, it's a class. Whenever you see a hash mark or pound sign, it's an ID. And here's more examples, pound sign global search, dot search mode. So they must have somewhere class equals search mode. And these are obviously used a lot at Apple, and they're used a lot by a lot of websites. Let me close that. Let me actually pop open their source code again. Uh, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Let me make sure I clicked on a blank area. There we go. View page source. OK, here we go. Let me zoom in again, make sure you can see this. So this is Apple's source code again. And here we go, unordered list, ID equals global nav. OK, so that's an example of using an ID, uniquely identifies an element on the page. And at a quick glance, I don't see a class there. Let me see, oh, here we go. Here's a class right down here. So here's a div with class equals SP label. So class attributes, ID attributes, and they man, they're manipulated with class selectors and ID selectors. Yeah, easy enough. We're not going to make an, uh, an Apple quality page here, but I do want to give you a quick little demo of this stuff. I'm going to go down here and my body of my page, and I'm going to create a series of divs. Actually, yeah, I'll do one div, and this is going to be ID equals box holder. There we go. So I uniquely identified this div. And if I'm using an ID attribute, important here, if I'm using an ID attribute, that means there will only be one instance of this per, per page. For instance, I might have a box holder on every page in my 100 page website, but I will not have two box holders on the same page. That's because I'm using an ID attribute. ID is for uniquely identifying an element. It will not occur more than once per page, as opposed to classes. So within this box holder, I'm going to have a div. 
ID equals um, just I'll just call it box and this will be content and a closing div and I'm gonna have several of these oops I meant to do these um, my mistake already see these were supposed to be a class so let me copy that paste 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 there we go so I've got one unique box holder and I'm using an ID attribute for that and then I've got five boxes and I'm using a class for those you can have multiple classes on a page so here we go if you think you're gonna be using it multiple times per page and you want multiple elements to have similar kind of style similar characteristics similar look then you're gonna use a class attribute if it's unique once per page then you're gonna have an ID attribute now what if you know what if I do want to have multiple box holders well are they the same or are they different if they're the same then I would use class equals box holder and then I would use it multiple times if they're gonna be different I could always have box holder one and then I can make ID equals box holder two so I have two box holders but they're a little different so just depends on how you want to use it now that I've got these elements here I could go ahead and style them so by the way what does my page look like right now let's just run this in Firefox real quick so we can see there we go so there's there's my uh, divs so let's head back over here and let me run a little bit of style um, I'm gonna go ahead and put in a reset rule I've mentioned this in a couple other tutorial videos you may not have seen them yet but I'm a big fan of the reset rule and this is the reset rule I most often use it's a very simple one a very uh, very you know short reset rule but basically I'm using an asterisk for all selectors it's a wildcard and I'm setting the margins and padding to all elements to zero and a reset rule is a great way to start getting your pages looking consistent in different browsers and it just it makes a lot of control things easier as your pages get more complicated so I've got that now I'm gonna go to my uh, uh, box holder notice that I'm using of course the hash mark or the pound sign there and then I can just decide what I want this box holder to look like I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give it a little bit of margin of 20 pixels a little bit of background color and a border there we go so my box holder it now has visible elements and then I'll do something similar for my um, boxes so for my boxes since those are class attributes I put a dot in front of it and it's dot box not dot boxes it has to match up with my actual class name here okay so I'm gonna do dot box and for these I'll do width 100 pixels height 100 pixels border two pix solid red margin 20 pixels and I'll float them all to the left let's see what we got now there we go oh, got a little anomaly here not a topic for this video but let me show you how to fix that real quick this happens whenever you float elements inside of a container let me just go to my box holder and I'm gonna do overflow hidden there we go back in business okay so now we can see I've got these five boxes and they share the same class which means they have the same characteristics in this case with height margin border and stuff like that now what if some of these were a little bit different though what if I also had another class okay so check this out in addition to my box class I could have my um, my cool class and my cool class may be the uh, background color is a uh, light yellow and um, you know, let's just do a font size change and the font size is 14 points okay so now I've got this other class that I can apply and I can do this in a couple ways but I think one of the best ways is for some of these I can just do spaces right in here 
So what this means is several of my boxes, if I can spell, several of my boxes have two classes applied, the box class and the cool class. All right, so if I save this, go to my browser and refresh, I can see that some of my boxes are now different. That's because I've applied multiple um, classes to them. So this is how you can apply one class to an element and you can apply multiple classes to an element. You don't usually do this with IDs though, okay? Because generally an ID is uniquely is it's a unique element. One one rule controls it. And there we go. So those are ID elements, I'm sorry, ID attributes and class attributes which help describe elements. And then I'm using ID selectors and class selectors to manipulate how those elements look and sometimes behave on the web page.